For Kruma Media's Polity, I'm Tabi Madiba. Joining me today is leading activist of community upliftment and founding member and CEO of WePold, Gloria Sorobe, here to unpack a book titled An Ode to My Mother-in-Law, Winnie Sorobe. Welcome, Medleria. You penned an ode to your mother-in-law, Winnie Sarobe, with this book. So can you briefly tell us how she inspired you with love and acceptance? Um, I'm 36 years married. Um, so when you join this large family as a new uh, wife, it can be quite daunting uh, because you're coming into a, an established set of homes with their value systems and fellow systems and traditions and all of that and so most important is that you are integrating yourself into this mm. and um, it, it helps a lot to have somebody who can hold your hand as you do that because what really is expected of us is that we can just take a back seat and learn how it's done, how are they doing things here, and make it your business to understand it. And so I think the best person to learn from in my mind is the one who has done the same thing before, some 40 years before you, because she too came from her own home and joined this family, and now she is part of the system. Okay. And that's what inspired uh, want to write this. And can you briefly talk to us about your relationship with Mama, as you call her in the book, Winnie Robe? Also share with us some of what could be useful to mothers and daughters-in-law. I think the, the importance of seeing her as Mama is that, truly speaking, you're being transferred from one mother to another mother. So your own mother has done her best to bring you up to a certain age. And so when you get married, you, you kind of like get into that other uh, house with a mother in it. So in my case, I was 28 uh, when that happened. It's not that bad in terms of age and maturity, but in terms of it being your first marriage, you don't know much about anything. Uh, it's almost like that's the stage that she's taking you then to another level, to be a woman, to be a wife, to be a mother, yourself, and, and so on. So the, what one can learn from that, because she actually uh, gave a very firm hand, very firm support, and uh, learnings, of course, you must be teachable as well, and um, but carry you to uh, all manner of things. Interesting enough, um, I'm saying that you need a mentor in marriage, just like you need a mentor at work. And but with marriage, we tend to think that we don't really, but you do, because also families are a deep system as well. Just like when you join NetBank or Standard Bank, you are joining a deep system. That's why you need a mentor. And secondly, um, at that young age, you, you struggle with this thing of balancing being successful at work and also being successful in family. Being a good wife, good, being a good mother, being a good in our case. And so the that the importance there of, of my mother-in-law then is that of she also bridged that gap of where you're struggling at this uh, career and family because she herself was a professional nurse and she understood that uh, struggle of being a career woman and also being a wife. She was 21 uh, when she got married, much younger than me, but she actually successfully brought up a family of, uh, of five children in the process and being a professional nurse and also being a community worker. And all of this, she passes them to me, which became very handy for me even as I was progressing uh, in my career, in my business life. 
So I'm just saying you are actually then asking what lessons then uh, can you give is to say for those who are mothers and laws, uh, can you be kind uh, to this little girl coming from wherever and be that mother that she has left behind and take her forward. But I'm also saying to the young uh, wives, can you just give this mother a chance? Uh, to bring you up and be the mother that you left behind and and when you do that there's a chance that there will be a better you uh, both at work and here as a family person because she also has seen it all. We also tend to say that uh, I'm a career woman uh, whatever. These mothers were career women Remember, most mothers were domestic workers. There was nothing much more harsh than being a domestic worker because in the few hours of a day, all her time is spent doing this domestic work, somewhere to earn a living, and no much time left to schedule this and schedule that. So we can't claim more hardship uh, today because you're a lawyer, you're a CA, you're in computer science, and so you've got a career in Standard Bank. They had a career. Mm -hmm. We are not the first lot uh, to have careers. Other mothers were teachers, and nurses, all manner of things. And so they have learned how to make do with a little bit of time they've got uh, to bring up, bring up homes. And so I think we can learn from that and, and, and have enough humility uh, to understand that there's nothing much more special about us being career women today. These women were career women long time ago. And Midloria, talk to us more on how Mewi Nisrobe was always deeply rooted in her community and contributed as much as she could. She came from uh, Tabanjo. Uh, Tabanjo, born 1933. Time-wise, uh, it's quite a, a, a serious period in terms of, uh, of life in South Africa. All the social ills you can think about uh, were loaded on that time. And so in their lifetime, they've seen a lot of that. And so what happens is that a while, of course, she took the route of being a, a professional nurse. She also was deeply entrenched in the community work. And whether it is about being a consumer or being a blind association or Black Housewives League, everything. Mm -hmm. Because all these NGOs, one way or another, uh, they were dealing with one type of social ill to another. And, um, and she became very active in that. In the process, she dragged me into that as well. Uh, because I didn't know much about community work. I learned it from her, um, which I'm always grateful for that because my career doesn't necessarily take me to that road. But in my decision making, I'm preoccupied by all of those things because she actually entrenched me in that way of thinking. Tell us how Mama connected you to her networks and in doing so, she built you a village of support, mentorship and leadership. So as she was going on with her community work and taking me along, wanting me to assist here and there, um, I met most of these leaders except of course I knew them in that context. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that they were important people until quite a time later. So you'll find that uh, in YWCA, uh, Major Isaroka is there uh, with the uh, uh, Zamani sisters and so on. You find Uma Ellen Kuzwayo, they are there. We then go to the Black Consumer Union Omani Noni, Rampumane, they are there. You go to the Black Housewives Leagues. Omam um, Salimotlana is the president. This side, then you have Mamle Atutu. All of them 
were in one thing or another um, and as you are going through this you are actually um this course about go back for Camille you are being nurtured mm -hmm. uh, by these powerful women oh my Albertina Sisulu uh, you're being nurtured by these powerful women you, you're not even aware that actually they are powerful um, all I knew was that I had a mother everywhere whether I go to Botswana or Mafikeng um, or Mabopane or Springs Davidson, Kwatema I always knew that there is a mother there that I know I can always ship in and say hello and uh, so I became this gorgeous uh, little Makoti who's got a mother-in-law everywhere mm -hmm. I could go. And so even by the time then I realized that these are important women, I had a natural relationship uh, with them. Mm -hmm. And so I could so support whenever I needed it from them because I knew, knew them in that way. So when I'm talking about shifting her network uh, to me, it is in that context. We are just being with mothers and making tea and coffee and scones and every umakotika wini. That's all you are. They don't even, if your name doesn't show up, right? Um, but you know, yeah. And in business, I have leaned on them sometimes with ease, even though they were not in business. They were a community worker and others were politicians. So mam and mama shimeni, all of that. And you could actually lean on them, even in business. And Miss Gloria, discuss with us some of Whipple's milestones in your career. Well, Whipple itself, the formation, is a, a, is an important milestone. Actually, even on Whipple, when we decided to form Whipple, and there was four of us, um, we were aware that we are not quite known. Uh, because we were young but what we were going to do was to end up having to get people to invest into we hold trust us with their money and they don't know us mm -hmm. and that time was a horrible time because there were pyramid schemes where people were being cheated out of their monies and and and, and all of that so it was going to be difficult to just go cold and actually tell women to invest in Whipple. So what we did was to uh, take 30 stalwarts, leaders, uh, away for the weekend to brief them about Whipple, what we want to do. And even though they said they are not business people, we said we are talking to you as leaders. And therefore we want to get your understanding of what we do endorse it if you think it is the correct thing to do but we are quite uh, anxious that the women uh, are not in the mainstream of the economy and we can only do it this way and so we stayed over the weekend all of them uh, for this weekend mom joyce rock mom tombin all of that uh, 30 of them and at the end of the weekend, they actually then did say they understand and they endorse the program and we can go ahead. What was then easy for us was that we could have that voice behind us for encouragement, but also have that voice behind us for in case we wanted to do something untoward towards people's monies that voice also was a reminder that you cannot create crime around this. You have to do it right. Governance was everything. Not one cent must be lost because their credibility is now sitting behind you. And um, so that is an example of taking those networks uh, to something that they're tangible. Of course, we Paul does very well. It becomes a first woman coming to be listed in stock exchange, extremely exciting. Um, Whipple does other things. Today, Whipple is, is a proud owner of a cement plant, for example. Now, the 
idea of being in cement is a man's thing, right? Mm. Uh, but we excited ourselves, besides it being a good sector commercially, but we excited ourselves about being able to disrupt these sectors. But deep in, uh, in agriculture, again because we want to disrupt uh, this sector of agriculture. So um, there's many other things really, milestones, we call it milestones, it's 30 years, so mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's quite a long time. Mm -hmm. And lastly, Medloria, what are you hoping people take away after reading this book? What I'm hoping people will take away from this book is that, number one, uh, while we are building uh, South Africa in all manner of ways, economically and so on, we also have a broken family system. We've got a broken, uh, the social fabric is very much broken. And the, in a way, while the proxy is my mother-in-law, uh, the big thing I want in this book is to show actually the, how the foundation of family is the one that will make or break South Africa, uh, economically or politically. And to the extent that that foundation is broken, we need to build it again. Uh, we need to reconstruct uh, the family units and um, for the marriage and the mother-in-law system and being teachable and have the humility to be the leader of this family in their way, not your way, uh, to understand how that family of Sirobe has lived over so many years. And uh, even when you bring some enhancements uh, into it, even when you do bring some value add uh, to it, but first know it, uh, you can't change the whole thing. You have to, you can add value to something that has been established over many years. How uh, people are buried here, uh, some families bury in the morning, some families bury midday, others in the evening, some, bear, some families bury immediately, others can stay uh, two weeks. This belongs here, it's not yours. And so as an incoming uh, wife, Makoti, follow those rules, respect those traditions, uh, give honor uh, to those uh, family systems. And if you can make them better, do so within the boundaries of those uh, family values because they are not yours. The reason you have to do that is because your children are going to be part of the system. And you do not want to leave them with a family with no values, with no foundation, with no tradition, with none of that. Because even as we go global, uh, South Africa, we're doing have this uh, global play now. We're playing in the big spaces. Uh, you have Saudi Arabia, you've got UAE, you've got Europe, uh, America playing with us. All of these people, you will notice they know who they are. Uh, and they're not going to change their lives uh, for us. What is very important is that even us, when we play with them, you can't mimic them. You must be a South African. You must be from the Serobe family. I am not from another family. And so everything that comes uh, with Serobe, I carry with me. Because everything that comes with them, they carry it with them. Even as you sit in the boardrooms, you are sitting with people who are very comfortable uh, with their traditions, how they wear and how they dress and all of that. And so there's a bit on our side which I think we're starting to want to disown uh, those things that are ours because we think that they're not cute, they're not cool and all of that. And in the process, uh, we are losing ourselves, we're becoming weaker and weaker because we have no point of reference. Everyone, when the chips are down, everyone goes home. 
And so when we have broken these homes, we have nothing to go back to. And so I want this uh, book to be that book that can have these conversations in homes about uh, is maybe the route to take about uh, building these homes because I'm referring to the fact that the fact that you are getting married today, the expectation is that you will come and build this family. You will come and do better uh, than your own mother or your own mother-in-law about uh, this uh, family. You come and do better than all of them but you will keep their value system traditions exactly as they are and, and enhance them if you have to. That is what I want the book to do. Hopefully over Christmas people will be having those conversations because some of the things we are struggling with as, a, as a young wives, we are sweating the small stuff really. Uh, there is nothing dramatic about expectation that you will cook for the family. You are going to cook for yourself, by the way. It's just that now instead of cooking for one, you are cooking for ten. So what? Uh, so the things that we're dramatic about are not very important. The important thing for me is entrench yourself into this family, make it work. And so let's just make these family units to work uh, if we are going to build South Africa in whatever form whether politically or economically, but the family f system must be based properly. That is what I'm hoping. That was Gloria Sorobe speaking to Krima Media's Polity about an ode to my mother-in-law, Winnie Sorobe.